Millions of people take personality tests every single year, but how accurate are they? Are these telling us important things about ourselves, or are they just a bunch of bunk? That's what we're going to discuss today. But let's start talking about what personality tests measure. Well, one of the most popular personality tests in the world, maybe the most popular, is the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator, also known as MBTI. This test measures four traits. The first is it measures E versus I, which is extroversion versus introversion. Extroverts like to get energy outside of themselves through things like socializing. Introverts get energy from things inside themselves, like quiet reflection. Then you have the trait of N, which is intuition, versus S, which is sensing. Intuition is about seeing the big picture, seeing abstraction. S, sensing, is about seeing things concretely around you, focusing on your five senses. Then we have T versus F, which is thinking versus feeling. People who are more thinking like to make decisions through logic and reasoning. People who are more feeling like to make decisions based on how they feel and taking into account the feelings of everyone else. Finally, we have judging versus perceiving, J versus P. People who are perceiving prefer to do things spontaneously. They prefer to do what they feel like at that moment. People who are judging like to make plans in advance. They like a lot of structure. So those are the four things that Myers-Briggs personality tests measure. We can contrast this with another system, the Big Five system of personality. This is one that's developed by academics. And in fact, in the scientific study of personality, very few people use the Myers-Briggs system, despite its popularity. Academics like the Big Five system. Well, how was the Big Five system developed? How was it different? Whereas the Myers-Briggs system was based on theory of how someone's speculations about how people work, the Big Five system was based on statistics. What they did is they gave people a whole bunch of words in English you could use to describe a person, and they said, which of these words apply to you? And what they found is that there were certain words where if you said one applied to you, you probably said the others applied to you as well. It's kind of clusters of words that went together. Well, once they did the statistical analysis, five factors came out of this. There were these five clusters of words reflecting different underlying personality traits that they found in the data. So what are the five factors? Well, there's extroversion, which is about how social and energetic uh, and friendly you are, which maps very closely onto the E versus I factor of Myers-Briggs. The second big five factor is openness, which is about being imaginative and creative and intellectual. And this actually maps pretty well, it correlates pretty well with the NS factor of Myers-Briggs. Then there is conscientiousness from the big five system, which is about being orderly and rule abiding and organized. Next, there's agreeableness, which is about being polite and nice and empathetic and kind. And the agreeableness factor actually maps pretty well onto one of the Myers-Briggs factors as well, which is the thinking feeling dimension of Myers-Briggs. Finally, uh, in the Big Five system, there's a trait that really doesn't map well onto any of the Myers-Briggs traits at all, which is neuroticism. And neuroticism, which is sometimes inverted and called emotional stability, is about being anxious, being depressed, being moody, uh, having very intense emotions in general, getting angry easily, and things like that. So that's the Big Five system. Uh, it's based on statistics rather than a theory of how personality works. Now, how accurate are these different tests? Well, we decided to run a study to put them to the test. And what we did is we recruited over 500 people in the US. We developed a test in the style of Myers-Briggs. So it's not an official Myers-Briggs test, but it's in that style based on the same underlying kind of theory. The MBTI style test we gave to people, we also gave them a big five test. So that means that they got their categorization from the MBTI style test, their letter grades of the, are they an E versus I, an N versus an S, and so on. And they also got their five scores from the Big Five personality test. And then we said, can we predict things about people from their personality results? So we collected 37 of what we call life outcomes, which are facts about a person. Things like, what is their gender? Uh, have they been arrested? Um, are they satisfied with their life? Do they meditate and, and how long do they meditate for daily? So those 37 facts about a person, we tried to predict them from their personality tests. And what we found was really interesting. We also used astrological sun signs as a control group, where we asked people what their zodiac sign is, are they in Aries, Pisces, etc., and we used that to try to predict these 37 outcomes as well. So, what were the results? When we used astrological sun signs, we found zero predictive accuracy across any of the 37 
outcomes about a person. Okay, well what about the personality test? Well, what we found is that the Myers-Briggs style test felt almost exactly halfway between astrology, sun signs, which had no predictive accuracy, and the big five. So it was about half as good as the big five. Now, how good was the big five? Well, it was decent. We had a roughly a 0.2 correlation between our predictions and the, the reality of these outcomes. So that's not a, a huge predictive ability, but it's a decent one. And then the Myers-Briggs category were about half as good as that. Now, why is it that the Myers-Briggs style test was performing worse? We investigated this, and we found that it was predominantly due to two reasons. The first reason is that the Myers-Briggs style test typically puts people in these categories, these dichotomies. And when you give these four dichotomies, you can put them into 16 categories. And it was losing a lot of prediction of accuracy from doing that. So if we instead treat the, the Myers-Briggs style as scores, so as continuous numbers rather than dichotomies, it becomes quite a bit more accurate. But it's still not as accurate as the big five at predicting things. Well, what's the other reason? The other big reason is that the big five, remember, it measures neuroticism. And that fifth factor, neuroticism, was very important for the predictions. And so if we remove neuroticism from the big five temporarily, and we treat the Myers-Briggs style scores as continuous scores, as numbers, rather than these binary dichotomies, the accuracy was much, much closer. The big five still outperformed by a little bit. It wasn't so much that you can be sure it's not just due to chance, but it was still a little bit better. And that might be simply because it's factors or maybe are better factors, perhaps because of the way it's constructed using statistics. Um, but it was pretty close. Most of the difference in the predictive accuracy was, was determined by those two things, the, the missing neuroticism from the Myers-Briggs style test and the fact that it usually puts people in dichotomies and the continuous scores perform better. Now, you might say, well, how should I do things differently now that I know this? Well, what I would suggest you do is check out on our website, we made this thing we call the ultimate personality test. And what it lets you do is it gets your scores from both of these systems. You get to see your Myers-Briggs style results, um, and you also get to see your big five results, and you can compare them. And we also talk about in that tool, the research that we do. So if you go to clearthing.org, you can check out right now the ultimate personality test. It's free to do, and you can find out how you score from both these systems and also learn more about the accuracy of these systems.